All right, here we go, guys. We have a little fussy baby this morning. Well, what happens when you call your kids? Do they spring into action? Do they jump up and immediately say, Yes, Mom, I would be happy to do that for you. Or do you find yourself calling over and over and over? Hmm. Patiently and over. I have one child that takes about five times before, you know, for them to actually do what I ask them to do. And then, and then, this is the worst part, I'm the nag. Don't you love it? My other child sometimes takes that long, but then sometimes, you know, they do it right away and I am in shock and disbelief. When it gets done the first time I ask, I'm like, really? Uh, so it is, it's, it's that bad. <laughs> Another response I get is, sure, mom. And then I wait, and I wait, and I wait. And I say, what happened? And they go, oh, I forgot. Don't you love it? <laughs> well, God calls Abraham, and he responds with immediate obedience. And this is really, it's truly remarkable, given Abraham's background, because he really, it, he doesn't seem to be from a God-fearing family. In fact, he wasn't from a God-fearing family. Um, he was, pro his family most likely was filled with idolatry and pagan worship, um, his city that he came from was the center, one of the centers of, of pagan worship in that time. And we like to think that, you know, there's something about, we like to not think that Abraham is from an idolatrous background because we like to think there's something redeemable about him innate because of God called him. We, 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 but the reality is he probably was a very worldly person, a worldly man. Um, immersed in, in idolatry. Um, but our natural inclination is to hail him and put him on a pedestal as being chosen by God because of something good and inherent and redeemable within him. But God's call is always about God. Um, it's not how wonderful man is, but it's always how majestic and benevolent and merciful God is. So we come to this account of, of Abraham, and again, it's just our natural inclination to kind of, as we go through the next several chapters and we're studying Abraham's life, you know, it's kind of innate within us that we want to put him up on, on a pedestal, but really God's on stage through Abraham's account. And so I just, I want you guys to keep that in mind as we study, as we study Abraham, because like Dorita said so many years ago, and it's so stuck with me, history is his story. Mm. And it's really, it's really an, an awesome and amazing God doing an amazing thing through Abraham's life. That's what we're going to see. Um, and it's not only remarkable that Abraham responds to the call because, you know, because, and, and not only because he had no, probably no um, background of God, the one true God, um, and that his, 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 everything that he knew was all about paganism and idolatry. Um, but also, what makes him amazing that he responded to God's call with such immediate obedience is that the city that he was from was really uh, was really luxuriant. It was really the the, the hip city of the day. Um, it was a port city. Um, it was um, there were a lot. There was it, it was in that Mesopotamia area. Do you guys remember when your kids were in sixth grade and Ur was actually on the on the map? And it was right there. Food and water were plentiful. Um, he really seemed to have had the good life. He seems to have come from a wealthy family. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> um, and, um, and he probably was a good businessman. He probably was very prosperous and comfortable. He had an easy life, a good life. Um, so, you know, leaving the city to wander in the desert was really no small thing. And Jeff, we, I was talking to Jeff this morning, and he's like, yeah, it probably would be like somebody um, leaving a $5 million home on the water in Greenwich to go, and I said, to go homestead in Alaska. And he's like, it's even worse. It's almost like, because he didn't even, you know, he wasn't even in his country. It was probably like going to homestead in Siberia. 
It was wow. just a, such a different, different environment. Staying in Ur meant acceptance and support and prosperity and protection, too, remember? Because back then they didn't have, you know, the laws and the police like we have. So again, you had to worry about, about bandits and um, being on the road. Following God's call meant for Abraham parting from loved ones, um, of course, needing to provide for his own needs, needing to find water and food, um, just like we said, providing for your own safety. And it wasn't, as we're going to see in future chapters, it wasn't just for Abraham and Sarah and his, his father and Lot. It was, you know, they had accumulated many servants and, um, and, and people uh, that served them. Um, so it was for, it was almost like a tiny, there, it was almost like a little tiny town moving out <laughs> of a big city. So he had a lot of people to worry about. It wasn't just him. Um, but when God calls, he always provides the faith to respond with your life. And Abraham does. Um, we're going to see in future chapters, you know, does he follow God perfectly? You know, he doesn't. And, you know, does he, does he, you know, we're going to see in the next several, several weeks, we're going to see heights of faith and we're going to see lots of lacking in faith. We're going to see failures in faith. We're going to see tests of faith. We're going to see sometimes he passes the test and sometimes he doesn't. Um, but the point is, um, God doesn't call us because we're spiritual giants. <laughs> he calls us because he loves us and he wants us to be involved in his plan to accomplish his purposes. Um, and he wants us to, to know him and experience him, um, to experience his character, his love, his joy, his patience, his kindness, um, his gentleness um, in increasing measure. And he wants us to experience his power at work in us and through us that we see the situations in our life working out according to how, according to him, according to what he's doing. And, and, and to rejoice in that and be involved in that. Um, uh, you know, God's call, uh, there is no greater joy on earth, really, than seeing somebody, you know, our children or our friends or our loved ones, take that next step in faith, wherever they are. Um, if they don't know God, to get closer to knowing God, or if they are on the fence about knowing God, to make that commitment to follow God, and there's nothing greater on earth than seeing that and God involving us in that. Um, so God... When he calls us, he always provides faith within us to be able to respond to that call with our lives. Um, do you think China's coming back? Yes. <laughs> Here she comes. <laughs> okay. Um, no, no. Uh-oh. Go boom. Yay! Oh, oh, I... I Oh, sorry, Drenda. <laughs> Turn us back. Okay, so we were just saying, you know, God always, when God calls, he always provides the faith to respond. He gives us the faith to respond with our lives. Um, God's call is also always accompanied by promises. Um, we see, we saw this week when you were studying in chapter 12, um, the first time we read God pro God's promises to Abraham is in chapter 12, uh, verses 1 to 3. The Lord said to Abram, leave your country, your people, your father's household, go to the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So for Abraham, I mean, this was incredible, because actually Abram, the name Abram mm -hmm. means father of many. He's 75 years old at this point. And when he would meet someone and say, Hi, my name is Father of Many. And they'll say, How many kids do you have? And he'll, how humiliating that is to say, Well, none. But, okay. Um, but God's promising that he's going to, uh, that his descendants will become a great nation. And that God's going to bless him. And, you know, if you think about it, I mean, he and Sarah probably were married for a long time. And they probably, even though God had blessed them materially, they still probably longed to have children in their hearts their whole lives, probably. 
Um, so this was amazing, this blessing to Abraham. And he believed God. Um, and yet God had something so much more amazing than earthly blessings. He had spiritual blessings that were beyond compare. And I wanted to read about what Paul says about it in about um, the spiritual blessings or what it means to know Christ compared to earthly things. And that's in uh, Philippians 3. Philippians 3. Um, verse 4. If anyone thinks he has reason, this is Paul speaking, if anyone thinks he has reason to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of the people of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, that was the elite tribe, a Hebrew of Hebrews in regards to the law, a Pharisee. Remember, he studied under Gamaliel, who was like probably one of the most famous Pharisees in the Jewish faith. They still talk about him today. Um, in regards to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for legalistic righteousness, faultless. But whatever, and we, we talked about that last week, but whatever was to my profit, I now consider a loss for the sake of Christ. What's more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God is by faith, and I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering and sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, so that somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. I mean, for Paul, I mean, what he's basically saying is, you know, he had it all. He had money, power, prestige, status, health, whatever we consider to be a gain in this physical world, he had considered, he, he actually, they're very nice. When they, they're very nice when they do the translation by saying they consider it rubbish because that's actually not the real word. The real word is poop, and if I could swear here, I would. It really, I mean, they use the swear word here. <laughs> it's poop. Anything this world has to offer is poop compared to knowing Christ um, and knowing, experiencing his resurrection at power, resurrection power at work in your lives. Um, that is so much greater than anything this world has. Can she let me hold her? Or does she want to eat? Oh my God, he's doing that. Remember, I scratch your back. She says, you put it back yeah. off. Did you see this? <laughs> Just for a little bit. And that's, um, we see that in Abraham's uh, brother. Abraham's brother, uh, Nahor. He looked, <laughs> Nahor looked like a success in the eyes of the world. Um, and actually, they, it, I read somewhere, and I think it was Boyce, that they named a city after him. <clears throat> and it's just so interesting to think about because 4,000 years later, and you know, Abraham looked, you know, like a, a ding-dong leaving all the good life, right? Um, like Noah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But 4,000 years later, no one knows his brother, Nahor. The city doesn't exist. You know, but everybody knows Abraham, right? But God wanted not just, you know, notoriety for Abraham. God wanted so much more. There's so much more that Abraham experienced um, that he would know God and God would call him his friend. And I'm not going to read it, but when you get a chance, there's something little that I always kind of raced by that I don't, I haven't really picked up, but I thought about it when I was thinking about Abraham. Um, but in John chapter 8, when Jesus and the Jews are going back and forth, and the Jews were, were, were appalled that Jesus would call them slaves, slaves to sin. And they were like, well, we're Abraham's children. How can you say we're slaves? I'm totally paraphrasing. Um, you know, we're descendants of Abraham. We are not slaves. We're free, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and they're appalled because Jesus says to them, well, if you, were Ab if you really were children of Abraham, then you would do what he did. Um, and then Jesus says, no, in fact, you're children of Satan. And they're like, well, you're possessed by Satan, na, 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 right? And it's right, actually, it's a little phrase that Jesus says right before he makes that great claim to deity when, when Jesus says, before Abraham was born, I am. And that's when he was saying, 
I am God. I am the Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end. I am the Lord God, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth, Lord God of the universe. I am. I am. But right before he says that, um, verse 56, uh, Jesus says, Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. And that's in a past tense. So it just kind of makes me think of that, you know, we know that it, it, it makes me think that, uh, first of all, that Abraham really had a strong understanding that when God promised that all peoples on earth would be blessed by, through you, that he understood that the Messiah would probably come through his line mm -hmm. and that, that that would be the way God would bless, um, that he would be involved in Jesus coming, um, and he looked forward to that day. But also, he saw it and was glad, which kind of makes me think that Abraham might have been, I mean, I'm speculating, obviously, he may have been up there in heaven before Jesus came down, you know, to earth, or, you know, because it's a... <coughs> time space, space dimensional thing it's but but Abraham you know you kind of get the sense that 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 maybe you know he was rooting for Jesus you know before Jesus came down to to lay aside all the rights of being the second person of the Trinity to set aside um, um, his uh, divine body to take on the body of a, a baby a, a human and to walk in um, a humanness to fulfill <laughs> the role that God had him be as the sacrificial lamb that went to slaughter, that was, was sacrificed for our sins. Um, you kind of get the sense that Abraham was out there like, yeah, Jesus, go, go, go. You know, I don't know. They probably don't high five or fist bump, but whatever they do in heaven, you know, it's <laughs> like, yeah, Jesus. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I just, I just love that thought. Um, but but I, I, I feel that, you know, Jesus kind of slides that in there, kind of nonchalant. Because we always go to the, before Abraham was born, I am. So I always kind of focus on that. I didn't really, I don't really focus on that other point, that, that Abraham did rejoice to see Jesus is coming. Um, so we said God's call uh, always accompanies God's promises. So for Abraham, we're going to study that, you know, Abraham would have a child. And that he, that through his descendants, um, that all nations would be blessed, that the Messiah would come, that there would be redemption available, that all people would have the ability to come to know Jesus as their friend and Lord and Savior. And for us, you know, this God's promises, the word is just so rich in God's promises to us. You know, we read all over the place that, that we are God's kids and we are co-heirs with Christ and we are seated with Christ in the heavenlies. And just to name a few, you know, we have peace through the storms of life. Uh, we have joy that knows no bounds. We have everlasting love, uh, unconditional love. Um, we have forgiveness that doesn't depend on our righteousness, but on his righteousness. Do you need the Wi-Fi? Are you connected to Wi-Fi, Lori? I don't think so. But that's okay. Well, but if that if you're streaming that, okay. that's going to use your data. Oh, okay. Let me just put one second. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> oh. Oh, I, I don't know. It's not Apple. I don't do not Apple. Go, just go to settings, and I'll tell you the code. Do you know where settings is? <laughs> Should we pause this? I think we'll yeah. pause it. <laughs> 